what happened? Why during this time did so many people not leave Jerusalem? Why did they stay? Uh, because the result was, for most of them, death and destruction. So, where I was asking the question, why did so many people wait and not leave Jerusalem when the signs were there, when Cestius surrounded it and went to the outer wall and then he went to the north temple wall? Why? Well, for, for starters, uh, if you remember, uh, during the time of that this happened, um, the um, Jews attacked the uh, Romans as they were leaving, and they killed like 6,000 Romans. And like it was a big battle that, from the Jewish perspective, felt like, gee, we, we really won this, man. We, we got them. Uh, it was short-lived because it was not very long before um, the other events happened, like with Vespasian. Vespasian coming in as a general and invading Jerusalem um, during AD 67 and um, you know invading that area and the havoc that was caused by civil wars and all of that so uh, I you know I don't know if this is the case but but those that say that Paul and Peter were executed in AD 67 um, you know, I'm wondering if that date uh, kind of clicks for people because that was the year before Nero committed suicide and it was also, you know, after the siege by uh, General Cestius and, and uh, you know, they, people just kind of think that was the time because people were really just targeting, the, the Romans were targeting different people in the persecution by that point. So. But there was a different thing that happened that kept the people staying in Jerusalem, not leaving. These things happened beginning in AD 62 uh, when efforts were made to deny and minimize um, the prophecies that Jesus had said about the destruction of Jerusalem and to watch for the sign. Um, and also remember when that man, uh, Jesus of Ananias started to prophesy in AD 62 and uh, going up through the uh, the destruction of Jerusalem you know there were a lot of efforts to deny that and discount that and just say that that person was a madman so uh, however I'm going to po point this to where you can read some of this and I'm going to make a point here about false prophets and this was something that that I learned a lot studying uh, during the time period of the seven years before Jerusalem was destroyed in AD 70, history itself records that there were a number of false prophets who, quote, deceived the people. These false prophets became only worse from the time of the siege and withdrawal of Cestius, um, beginning with the Feast of Tabernacles in AD 66, and this went up through the siege of Titus in AD 70 at the Passover. And uh, there's parallels in our time. And this is where we can make the application. So these false prophets told the people to wait on God. And they quoted the scripture and other visions and prophecies to convince the people to stay in Jerusalem and not leave. In other words, they gave a peace and safety message. And they were good at taking scripture and misapplying it to discount uh, the prophecies around uh, that Jerusalem would be destroyed. So um, history records that the people were blind to the obvious signs that told of their doom. They did not leave. They did not listen to the signs and visions and that foretold of their destruction. So, you know, this is something that we can learn from today. Uh, you, when you think about all the different parties that are religious uh, parties that existed during this time, uh, we could probably find ourselves 
in one of those parties if we really think about it. You know, we might have been a zealot, we might have been a Pharisee, a Sadducee, an Essene, and there were other different religious factions there. These people quoted the Bible. They quoted it well. Remember that uh, from their perspective, they had been chosen from God way back from the time of Moses. So um, there were a lot, or was a long history of many, many years that happened from the time of Moses until now. Okay, so, but they discounted, and they discounted this when this man, Jesus of uh, Ananias, was going throughout the city every day, every street, chanting this dirge about woe, woe to Israel. So, um, we can apply this to our time. And I think, for me, I feel like this is something I should apply when I listen. And not just go by whatever different leaders are saying religiously or uh, people from different cultures that I might value. Um, so I want to point one other thing out here as we're moving to talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. The time period... from the siege of Cestius in eight, the fall of AD 66, going through the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 um, was literally 1,260 years. So just, hello, uh, I'm back for uh, uh, the video uh, number seven and I have a correction to make. Uh, I incorrectly um, stated that it was 1,260 years from um, the siege of Cestius to the siege by Titus. Uh, my dyslexia kicked in. It was 1,260 days, but it was three and a half years. Okay, so I'm going to describe some things that happened um, with the siege, and I'm going to come up here. I'm going to show you where I uh, more correctly wrote that. I corrected some of that up there. So the the siege, the siege actually began um, during the Passover in the spring of AD 70. This was not a good time because there were Jews from all over the world, including Egypt. India, Africa, who came to the Passover. It was one of the most attended feasts um, that the Jews had. And um, it, kind of similar to if you, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful to people who are Jews or Muslim, but the Muslims have a feast every year and uh, for Ramadan, and they they have people from all over the world. So there are certain feasts that cultures and religions have that are heavily attended, and this was one of those for the Jews. And um, so because of that, when Titus surrounded Jerusalem in the spring of AD 70, um, there were all these Jews from all over the world who could not leave. And this siege lasted for three to four months before the destruction uh, by the Romans and uh, the slaughter of those who were still alive, most of those who were still alive. And that's not counting those who died of starvation before that. So this was um, like the perfect storm, so to speak, for a mass catastrophe uh, to a group of people, a nation. and. Um, so uh, I'm not going to describe a lot of things about the siege and about the destruction other than the dates and the things that we're looking at for the purposes of this discussion. But I want to point out that here the spring be in the spring of um, 8070, the siege began. This would be the first day of the first month on the Jewish calendar. I don't have an exact date for that. And the dates given for the destruction of Jerusalem three to four um, months later uh, vary uh, from what I could tell in the historical record. Um, some listed as early as 
June 8 of AD 70 up through possibly August 10 and if you look at Wikipedia it'll it'll give you September and there's a couple of other references I found find that could say that so I want to explain a little bit about that and what we're looking at here um, there are several dates given for the destruction by the historians. They don't agree on the dates. It seems like there is an agreement about them, uh, among them, not to really state a firm date, uh, possibly because there are many historians, including Jewish historians and uh, non-Jewish historians, who need to come to an agreement, and they just haven't come to an agreement on the exact date according to the Gregorian calendar. Um, so, um, the one thing that historians do agree on is that it was in, on something called the 9th of Av, or Abib, and this is a, a, a Jewish date, it's a Jewish date that has had many cat catastrophic things happen, uh, to, to the, uh, to them, and I'm going to list a number of those things here just to get a picture of, of this, okay? So the 9th of Av, Abib, you can um, Google this and it will show you this information and it will give it in much more detail. Um, on um, one, the, one of the first um, not good uh, historical events that occurred um, on the 9th of Av, Abib, was um, with the spies in Jerusalem, a question, the spies going into Israel av from the Exodus. There were 12 spies, 10 of them didn't want to go in when God said it was time, and two of them, Joshua and Caleb, wanted to go in. And so as a result of that, they received a curse and they were wandered in the wilderness for 40 years until all the people age 20 and over died. And then the next generation went in to Israel. Uh, this is an early uh, event in, in the Jewish uh, record. So then another date, uh, this is significant, um, and uh, all the historians recognize this. In 587, some historians say 586, I, I believe 586 is probably more correct, but in, according to the record um, on the internet, 587 BC the, was the date that the temple, the first temple was, um, Solomon's temple, was destroyed by uh, King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon. And, um, you can read about this in the Bible, you can read about this in history, it was, uh, so here, here was the second time now in 70 AD when there was a repeat and no one thought it, this could happen again, but it did. This is, this is not the first time that Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed, this is the second time. And uh, Josephus lists the the cry of the people who were dying as it as it was being destroyed, and also recognizing that uh, the temple was being destroyed and it was horrible. Okay, so another thing that happened on 134 A.D. was the Battle of Batar, where a a Messiah, a false Messiah. Uh, led that battle and the Romans uh, massacred uh, most of them and then another one was a year later in 135 AD when the Temple Mount was plowed and that was considered a time where uh, where everything was pretty finalized with this now I'm going to come back and I'm going to describe some more things that happened um, let me try to finish. If I don't, I'm going to do this in the next video. Uh, there was another, some other events on the 9th of Av, Abib, a uh, couple of historical events, laws that were passed that created and laid the framework for World War I and World War II with the Holocaust that occurred to the Jews in both of those wars. And um, then also some expulsions that occurred in other countries previous to that. So to the Jews, this date is 
a bad omen. Many bad things have happened to them on this date. Um, 